Every day off the coast of South Africa, hundreds of kilometers from the windswept shores of the Cape West Coast, far beyond the lights of seaside towns and cities, a skipper releases his net into the icy depths of the Atlantic Ocean. Using the instincts of his forefathers, the knowledge gained over many years at sea, and the insight provided by cutting-edge trawl technology, he tows his net through the darkest reaches of ocean, encircling the shoals of bottom-dwelling fish that will feed people across the length and breadth of South Africa, provide work in coastal cities and towns, and sustain a globally competitive industry. Working in rough seas and strong winds, and sometimes fishing at depths of nearly a kilometer under the sea, the skipper is just one of the unsung heroes of the South African offshore trawling industry. It's very hard work, but um, it's a very rewarding work, and uh, there's lots of goods and lots of things to learn in, in the process. It takes a lot of work to prepare the fishing nets and the, the gear to go to, out to sea and uh, to catch the fish. But it is, uh, it's a thrill once you see that 10 ton, 12 ton bag of fish coming on board and uh, it, it makes it so much work. And uh, there's a lot of things to learn, things like sustainable fishing. Um, former years we just went out at sea and catch the fish and nobody could care less. But nowadays we have to consider and learn fast about sustainable fishing so we can have a future for ourselves. There was a time when it was only the rough and restless who made a living as trawlermen. Fishermen once had a formidable reputation for being rough, ready, and living hard. But today, the trawlers in the South African offshore trawling fleet are modern and safe. They carry sophisticated navigation, communication, and trawling equipment. And the men and women who work on South Africa's deep sea trawlers are properly trained to work at sea. Many are qualified officers and engineers at the peak of the seafaring profession. You're not only working for yourself in your household, but you're also working for something like 32 people's household. So it's a lot of responsibility, but at the end of the day, the reward is so much, much work. In many ways, South Africa's offshore trawling industry is unique. Unlike the fishing fleets of developed countries, the South African fleet is not subsidized by government and never has been. Instead, the industry was built and developed by hard-nosed entrepreneurs. Risk takers, who as early as the turn of the 20th century saw the potential in South Africa's virgin deep sea fish resources. Their vision and investment built an industry that is today technologically advanced, globally competitive, and is by far the most valuable of all South Africa's commercial fisheries. The South African offshore hake fishery was launched as a commercial industrial enterprise and it has maintained that structure ever since. It's vertical integration, meaning that right holders participate in every aspect of the business, from fishing to processing and marketing, has allowed the industry to prosper and survive, even in the toughest market conditions. And, owing to a constructive working relationship between government and the South African Deep Sea Trawling Industry Association, the fishery is well-regulated, well-managed and sustainable. We've just spent a week here in Cape Town uh, with an expert panel reviewing South African stock assessments. We've had experts from the United States, Canada, Argentina and Australia. The Hake resource looks to be in uh, good shape. The, the resource abundance has actually been increasing over the last uh, six or seven years and it looks as though the management arrangements that are in place, these management procedures that they use uh, to set the quotas here uh, seem to be working not only in the last few years but over a long period of time. At the heart of the industry is a fleet of 52 sophisticated and well-equipped fishing trawlers. These vessels are built to withstand the wild winds and heavy seas of the fabled Cape of Storms and provide a platform for catching processing and landing 160,000 tons of fish every year. The South African fishing industry, of which the Hake deep sea sector is but one player, 
is a relatively small contributor to the South African GDP. It's some half a percent or less. But it is extremely important to the Western Cape. So some six and a half thousand people are directly employed by the sector and uh, that equates to about 37% of the total fishing industry. The deep sea catch consists of about 20 different species, from a South African staple, snook, to deep sea species like ribbonfish, John Dory, and angelfish. But the bulk of the catch, about 145,000 tons, is made up of Cape Hakes, species that are renowned the world over for their white flesh, delicate taste, and firm texture. The hake deep sea sector exports approximately 65% of the hake it catches. And um, this equates to some three and a half billion rand in foreign exchange. Most of the countries to which we export are first world countries, specifically countries within Europe, so that would be Germany, France, Spain, Italy and Portugal, and the Americas. Um, the more sophisticated American markets and uh, Australia. Two reasons why South African hake is prized on international markets is that the product is of the very highest quality and it is certified by the Marine Stewardship Council. The MSC is an independent global organization that uses a system of eco-labeling to promote sustainable fishing. The MSC Ecolabel lets the consumer know the fish they're buying has been caught with the least possible harm to the environment. The South African hake trawl sector is the first hake fishery in the world to achieve the coveted Marine Stewardship Council certification. South Africa's deep sea trawl fishery has retained Marine Stewardship Council certification for 10 years. Over this period, the industry has initiated a number of projects aimed at improving environmental performance. For example, the industry has significantly reduced interactions between seabirds and fishing gear, restricted its trawl footprint so as to protect seabed habitats, and instituted new rules to better control the volumes of fish other than hake that are caught by trawl nets. Most importantly, there are now firm limits on the quantities of kinklip and monk that may be caught by deep sea trawlers. One of the advantages of holding the Marine Stewardship Council certification is that it makes you think about how you interact with the environment. It focuses people on ensuring that we achieve the criteria of sustainable utilization of the resource. Of the 52 trawlers active in the deep sea fishery, 25 supply frozen hake to local and international markets. Another 27 vessels are so-called wet fish trawlers. They preserve fresh hake on ice and return it to shore for processing or air freighted fresh to distant markets. These vessels are the foundation of South Africa's vibrant and technologically advanced seafood processing industry. The deep sea trawl fishery creates an estimated 65 jobs for every thousand tons of fish landed. The majority of jobs are permanent and non-seasonal which is practically unique in the seafood business. The industry's total wage bill amounts to 931 million rand per year. The work is physically very demanding, but it provides good wages and good benefits to the employees. Our factories provide over 1,900 jobs. The local market is highly competitive and portioned and packaged hake products predominate. However, the industry also supplies large volumes of fresh hake and other deep sea species to seafood markets in South Africa and beyond. Popular species like ribbonfish, snook, horse mackerel, panga and angelfish provide inexpensive high protein meals, particularly in the Western Cape. 77% of all fish eaten in South Africa comes from the hake deep sea trawl sector. One will find our fish in every corner of South Africa. For more than 110 years after it was established, the South African deep sea trawling industry remains a vibrant, sustainable business, subject to the vagaries of wind, weather and markets, but infused with the color and passion of the fishers who have plied the waters of the Cape for generations. Well, we sit sometimes with uh, uh, weather conditions, horrible weather conditions. You sit with uh, five, six meter swells, 40 to 50 meter wind conditions, and then of course, on, on, on the east coast you sit with currents running like four, 
nautical miles, and uh, that's all things that uh, makes it very interesting and it's a very hard job, but um, like I said, very rewarding.